Welcome to another issue of Gaia's Voice. Thank you for spending this time with me. And today's topic is another suggestion from one of our subscribers, so thank you very much for that. And I love hearing from you and, uh, and your suggestions for topics as well. I'm trying to get to as many of them as I can and to um, incorporate them into other subjects, weave them together when I can as well. So today we're going to be talking about, listening to Gaia, uh, about what I'm calling the invisible dimension. Something to do with body language and what we feel when we meet each other, greet each other, why we are able to shake hands with some and hug others. I notice this a lot at the seminars that I do as well. I see people that always want to sit in the front row, there's the back row, there's the people that need at least a few seats between them and someone else. And of course I see a lot of this at airports and in airplanes as well. A lot of positioning and movement of our bodies until they feel comfortable in spaces that sometimes feel foreign to us. So it seemed a great subject to ask Gaia to look at and explore for us. So here we go. Indeed, and we begin. As always, I tell you that it is a delight for me to share moments such as these with you. Of course, it seems to you that from the comfort of your own environments, your own spaces designated for this, that you hear my words broadcast to you. But truly, I would say to you that it is as if I am sitting with you, sitting across from you, listening to the words alongside you, to see how you feel and what you know, and in what other ways my Gaia may assist you in your own life and in your own endeavors while you are listening to Gaia speak about this topic or another that may be of interest to you. I am watching, listening, probing, supporting all of the other areas, all of the other topics that you may consider of interest in your own life, seeing in what other ways the earth can uplift and move and journey with you to all of the places that you would like to go. Where you cannot go, I endeavor to bring the world to you, to bring the world and lay it at your feet as best I can. And this is one of the simple ways to do that. And of course, I will endeavor to find many others to tickle you during these times as well. So it is a fine topic that has been selected for this day. I could not have chosen a better one myself. And I am delighted to bring to you such knowledge or explanations because it is one topic that you will see that you will consider for many more moments beyond this one. You will not be able to help to explore this topic any social moment that you place yourself in or even when you are alone here or there if the environment is warm to you or cool to your touch. So we will begin then by saying that there is indeed what could be called the invisible dimension or all of the energy that the space around you contains. The space around you is not empty space. If you will sit in a chair in your environment and look across the room and say, I can clearly walk 12 paces from here to there because there is space to do so. Indeed, you may walk through that space to go to your destination across the room. And there is a way for you to make to get there, but it is not empty space that you are traversing. In essence, you are sharing and interacting with everything else that is in that space with you. Those things that you can see, perhaps items that you have placed there yourself, and all that you cannot see there as well. There may be energy, residues of energy that were there previous to you. And there may be items, things, and peoples 
in your environment that have also very large fields. And at times you interact with these, intersect them, cross over them, walk upon them without even knowing that that is what you have done. Not because you are less than aware or less sensitive, but for the most part you have been trained, you are accustomed to seeing or calling what you can see with your eyes the real world. And of course if you will go bumping into a heavy object it would appear very real and very solid to you. But what of the other things and energies that you are bumping into? And so how would you recognize these is an excellent question. In essence, one of the ways in which you take everything in, the seen and the unseen, is through the waves of the brain. There are places within your brain that recognize everything that is in your environment and take everything in. Now, although parts of you recognize such subtleties, they do not always alert you to that. So there is a part of you that is recognizing very, very much more than what you take into your ordinary, everyday moment. The reason being that you simply do not need to. Or that that part of you that watches over you feels that you are already concerned with a moment or with a thought that has priority over the invisible energy. So for the most part, your brain waves give priority to your physical third dimensional world. They do so because you are arranged in a third dimensional body. And so your mind has arranged itself to follow these dynamics. Therefore, everything that is in the third dimension will take priority over those things that are more in the subtle dimensions, whether they be the second dimension of the other kingdoms or the fifth dimension of your thoughts in your essence that you are moving into. Of course, this shifts from moment to moment and from environments that you place yourself in, as we will see, but for the most part, because you are in a third dimensional body and have, for the most part, thoughts related to your third dimensional activities, the energy and the space that you occupy in arranges itself, defines itself that way. And it is according just as your color spectrum works. There are some colors that recede into the background while others are more noticeable in the foreground. Your eyes drink this in and arrange them in a certain way. And so your brain follows that function. Perhaps you have heard the expression that some peoples seem simply to be more comfortable in their skin than others. Well, that is a part of it as well. What does that mean to be comfortable in your skin? To be blunt, there are those beings that are better fitted to their bodies than others. They did not have quite as many complaints about another third dimensional life on planet Earth, another one in a reincarnational cycle of many this or many that. And so automatically they are more comfortable in their skin. If it is a being that is pleasantly accustomed to their life without many, many complaints as to their everyday occurrence, they are more comfortable in their skin. In essence, they are filling out their body, all of their essence. They have moved into their body, they have moved into their life, into their environment. And so they are more comfortable in their skin. Those that have had many more human lives than lives on other worlds would also be more comfortable in their bodies and in their environments in general. 
That being said, there are many that while they have had many lives on earth, they have taken a long sojourn away from the earth or toward other worlds that involve either other bodies or other ways to use specific organs of feeling and seeing and noticing life. It would be a little bit more difficult for these beings to be comfortable in their bodies as well. The more comfortable one is in one's body, the more comfortable all of the other aspects there are about life as well, or one's environment. Someone who is very comfortable in their skin, in their life, in their body, would also then be comfortable in the environments that they have created outside of them. Perhaps you will see that there are some that are always rearranging their environment. No, this does not go here. It can go better over there. Well, this system was very workable before, but now is a new system to define or to describe my work. Those who are always reinventing their home or their office or their systems, yes, they are quite innovative, but I will say to you that there is also some measure of discomfort in their relationship to themselves, their environment, their body, or how they view themselves within the context of life as well. And that is not to say that once you have placed certain things or people or objects into a certain arrangement in the life, that that is how it is to remain. But here we are exploring the different ways in which what is seen can also be unseen, or how its energy is expressed in the invisible realms. And so we are here describing a relationship to self. How is your relationship to your self? relationship to body, relationship to the dynamics of the body. Not simply how you hold your appearance as compared to others within your cultures and societies, but how is your relationship to the dynamics of the body? For instance, the stride of your walk, that is a body dynamic that relates to its environment. How are your eyes, at what level? At eye level? Are your eyes looking up, looking down? Are you comfortable to look deeply into the eyes of another? Or must they dart away, gaze away, because you cannot sustain that glance? Are you comfortable, for instance, looking at a clock or a watch and simply noticing the time of day without immediately thinking that you are late, early, or have not accomplished what you had set out to accomplish by that time. All of these are dynamics related to the environment. Can the light be bright and you be comfortable? Must the lights be dimmed for you to feel more comfortable in your own environment? With glasses on or glasses off, you will see is not simply a matter of seeing better. It is a dynamic of the environment as well. Anything that you place before you or in front of you to assist you in your world also has an invisible reference associated to that that is worth noting. It is not simply a matter of how you dress yourself or by what clothing, and yet all of these are in some ways barriers, boundaries, or expressions to the invisible world as well. If you will think of the animal kingdom, for instance, of course they do not change their dress each day as you do, but for them it is in their stance. How high do they hold the neck? What direction do they tilt in? Are they always watching their back, following others or leading others? And so you see all of these environments that can be described as entirely physical, the physical body and the physical environment become much, much more than that. Now we come then to the first invisible space that begins to define you, and that is what you term the aura. The aura 
surrounds you, protects you, encourages you, and contains just about everything that your body contains. Perhaps all by now are familiar with such charts of reflexology that will have an accordance on the hands or the feet that also then have a relationship with the organs of the body. Yes, those that you reference as acupressure, for instance. Well, your aura contains all of these as well. Now, there are those that read auras in your time, but not very accurately, I will say. Even those that truly believe themselves to be are not nearly as accurate as they were long ago in the Atlantean times, and yes, even in the very early Egyptian times, where one could truly encourage all of the health of the being without nearly invading the body, not even necessary to touch the body. It could all be orchestrated in one's auric field, and there were unique chambers that could adjust itself just to the shape and the feel and the intention of the aura, bringing soothing energies or coaxing such waves forward as would also then interact with the brain. You do not have these capabilities today, but they will return to you at a time when you are done poking and prodding the body, poor things, as if it were a cattle, to do what you wish them to do. That will come to a grand conclusion as well, and perhaps that is a subject for study upon another day as well. Now then, the auric field contains then a relationship to all of your thoughts, all of your ideas, your past, and your present, both the immediate past and present, and one that is a little bit more distant from you, but these are arranged nicely in the auric field as well. There is a relationship to the health and well-being of all that you are. All of your relationships to all of your loved ones can be seen and expressed through the auric field. Your visions, your dreams, and true desires, those that you are capable of manifesting, those are also expressed in your auric field as energy. Now, not all of these would be visible, even in your ability to photograph the auric field, which is very poor. Very few advances have been brought to this, and you do have many more abilities to photograph much more subtly the auric field than those that are offered to you now. The auric field contains many of your ideas that are unexpressed, not necessarily repressed or hidden, but those words that you wish to say to yourself or to others, those words that are on the tip of your tongue, those ones that you hold because you would believe that it is not as polite or not proper in this environment, or you do not know that individual well enough to say this or offer the other, they are also in your auric field. How safe and secure you feel in your world is represented by the size and the shape of your auric field. This field has been described to you as something that is somewhat spherical. Sometimes it has been described as conical, sometimes egg or oval shaped. While all of these are true, the field itself extends beyond even the visible aura. So there is the visible and invisible body existing side by side, what you would call your etheric double. Just beyond that, there is the auric field, there is the visible aura, and then beyond that, there is the invisible aura accommodating itself to you as well. The invisible aura contains even much, much more about you, the self, than you know. It contains all of the essences of your past life, not necessarily memories, but the essence, the truth, the truth of your being that which you are, your true makeup, 
your true relationship to God, all that is, is expressed in the invisible field that you are. And of course, you cannot help but take all of this with you everywhere that you go. This field that we are describing that is beyond the aura itself, depending upon how one is arranged, is shaped either in concave or convex ways, allowing energy to come to you or be deflected away from you. This is neither positive nor negative. It has more to do with what you are working on as a self, as a soul. If you are more working on your interior self, your inner truth, your inner sanctum, sanctuary of discovering more about yourself, your field would be shaped one way, deflecting outer energies and protecting that inner self so that it alone is the priority. Or, if you are moving into the world with an idea or with a project, if it is a time for you to move into your culture, your awareness, your greater truth as it is expressed with your physical being, then your field would accommodate for that, almost reaching out, making way for you in the world making space for you long before you have even arrived. How large are these fields? Well, it depends very much. And of course, they can adjust themselves to any environment and to any shape or size. Remember, this is invisible energy. It simply expands and contracts even as the breath does. How much movement does it take on your part to take a deep breath or a shallow breath it is almost imperceptible to anyone around you and it is the same with your field your movements with your field are almost imperceptible to others and even to you except that energy recognizes energy and that is how we come to the idea of how close you stand to someone else. Why is it that you can stand side by side with one person and you must be further apart from another? It is not simply a matter of gender. It is not simply a matter of whether you have been properly introduced or not. It has much more to do with the invisible field that says everything about you without saying anything at all. This invisible field is your calling card and it will say one thing to one individual and something entirely different to another depending upon the purpose and how perceptible one is and what the purpose of the gathering might be. And for that reason you are able to shake hands with one and embrace another pay very close attention to protocol or customs in one environment and be completely relaxed in another. All of this goes far ahead of you, arriving before you do to any moment, even before you have had a thought about where you might be next week or next month, your field, because it is in a field of intelligence after all, goes before you and makes the space, fills the space with what is most important there. If you like, you may think of it this way. If you were going to plan a grand event, a homecoming, a wedding, or what it will be, there are many, many important preparations that would need to take place at times, months ahead of time, to ensure that when the important moment arrived, all would be just as you would wish it to be. In the same way, the soul that is not bound by time or space, not limited in that way, paves the way energetically, fills the space with just the right ingredients so that when you do meet 
a unique individual or when you do come to an important moment or crossroads, that space contains everything that is most important for you. And so as you see, it is not simply how you move your body about and that an auric field interacting with another auric field may agree or may not agree. There are many, many levels and dimensions at work in this, and they do prepare the self, you, the personality, the awareness, your purpose. All of this, in essence, is taken care of for you so that by the time that you arrive, that is how you arrive into the proper moment, right on schedule. All of this happens automatically or semi-automatically. Your desire is guided, and so if your desire is very strong for a certain person or a certain event and then changes, the space would also change either filling itself or emptying itself, just like a vessel, depending upon your desire. Sometimes this takes place at the conscious level, sometimes at the unconscious or invisible level. Sometimes it is right on time, right on schedule, and sometimes your own uncertainties or vacillations make it so that the vessel is not sure whether to empty or fill itself and you arrive at a moment that is confusing to you where you are not certain what to do or what to say. Those awkward moments are often ones in which the energy itself had not completed itself. The soul, the personality, the self, the true desire, the objective was not clear. And so the moment was also not clear. Those are the moments in which you often wonder to yourself, now I wonder why I was there. Why did I go there? Or why was I invited? Or why didn't I decide to stay home? Or why would I have wanted to get involved in that project after all? Well, those are the reasons why or why not. And so the field, in essence, is as intelligent or as wise as you allow it to be. Again, this has little and nothing to do with your personality. Your personality is along for the ride. Your personality is the part that reacts or responds to the moment. The soul and the self are behind the scenes, orchestrating, creating, making perfect, or making perfection so that the personality, the effect of the moment can then take place. If you like, you may think of one part as cause, the invisible aspect as cause, and the physical or personality self as effect. The more that these two are able to come together, the closer the relationship is with self, with the field, and the more that they are able to expand or contract or create with that field more than others. You will note that there are some that seem much more capable of creating with their environment or what you would term being in the flow of their environment more than others. All of this plays a part in that. It can all be learned. It can all be created with. It is not truly something that some will always have a better handle on than others. It is a simple matter of awareness and relationship with self. In terms of when bodies come close enough to each other, that is a very interesting arrangement of space intersecting with all that has been placed in that space, in that environment as well. Of course, you understand that a common exchange of energies in your time, welcoming energies, is a handshake. There is a great deal of importance to that. First of all, as you extend your arm, extend your hand outward, if you will extend that out in front of you, just about as far as you can, that will be your visible auric field. 
That is the part that contains your personality, your comfort zones, your discomfort zones. As much as you are willing to tell others about yourself, that is as far as your energy field can contain. That part of your energy is filled with almost everything from your mental shopping list to your heartfelt feelings, how comfortable you are or are not in your body, your body's general health, the health of your organs, many different things about you, including as if you are a smoker or a non-smoker, that is contained in your handshake. And that is not to say based upon a smell, for instance. It is not that. It is contained within the field that extends all of the way to the tips of your fingers as you put them in front of you or out to the sides of you. What you think or do not think about the environment that you are in, all of your feelings, your opinions, and your judgments, those are all there in the moment with you. You may think that because you keep silent on a certain situation or keep a thought to yourself, because you do not choose to share it with others because it may or may not be appropriate, that others cannot see it. Well, it is true because it is not in the visible range. But I assure you, it is in the invisible aura that you offer to others. And for many, it is indeed quite visible. Thoughts, feelings, opinions, judgments, you present to others in a handshake. What you have eaten recently, if you are a meat eater, a meatitarian, or a vegetarian, these are also contained in your handshake. Many of your preferences, whether you prefer daytime or nighttime, this is also in the field next to your handshake. Whether you are comfortable in your body and in the nearness of others, that is also contained there. How you feel about the world in general, whether it is a safe or unsafe place, your world view, whether you have a positive outlook on the future of humankind, mankind, and the earth, even that is contained in all that you extend in a handshake. And of course, when others shake hands with you or come within that nearness, you are already exchanging all of that information with another. And of course, there is no true way to cover that up. You could not say, for instance, I will show them this but not that. It is perceived by the brain waves. It is taken in by another they may not be able to react or respond to it from their personality self, just as you may not, depending upon how well you have developed a relationship with these aspects of self, or have allowed others to truly look into your fields of experience or not. But at one level of lightness or density, all of these energies, all of this information is exchanged with another. In essence, you are almost exchanging all of your DNA with them simply by being in that invisible realm with them. Well, it stands to reason now that we have begun to explore these ideas that you may like or not like what you see. Now remember that the personality cannot, in essence, take all of this in at once because it is bound by thoughts and feelings of time and space awareness to the body. They are more dense, they are more associated with the physicalness, with the visible realm, with the third dimensional realm, which earlier we said takes priority, takes precedence over the others. And so the personality is not aware of all of this that we have described. But it can certainly say, oh, I like this very much. Or, for some unexplainable reason, it can even feel repulsed or unsafe by the moment, so much that it says, I cannot be here, will not be here. I will be elsewhere, or at least on the other side of the room, as social protocol 
may dictate. So your being recognizes all of this and you cannot hide it. Your integrity that you carry then speaks for yourself. Your invisibleness is your calling card. And so you see you may arrange yourself and your dress as you wish. You may arrange your appearance and your hair and your clothing as you wish but your field will speak for you. It will speak volumes before you arrive and particularly when you have brought then your physical essence in proximity. It is all there. And so there are a variety of reasons why it is said to you live for a greater truth, live for a deeper integrity, create a vision that you are comfortable with, live for your dreams or do your best to bring them forward because when you are living in untruth, even if it is your own, even if it is simply a course correction, it is in the field that you carry with you everywhere. And of course, as you already know from other discussions and other endeavors in your life, those things that are less than true are dense, and dense thoughts make dense space. Dense space makes for sluggish energy and your pace will be less than comfortable for you. When you come physically close to others, of course, other choices present themselves. A handshake, as we have described, is just one of those approaches. Those who feel very comfortable in themselves or recognize another and are willing to welcome them much closer they may hug, they may embrace one another. And even as we come to this particular stage, there are many different energies that are exchanged in that, an entire different language than that of the handshape takes place at the level of the embrace. The most normal of embrace is chest to chest at the higher shoulder level, and the embrace then often leads to a touch upon the shoulder, a pat upon the back. Mostly it takes place at shoulder level, sometimes reaching the mid-back, rarely the lower back, but at times as well. And so the shoulder areas, when one embraces there, the language there will say to another what they are holding on to that they did not present before them not necessarily what is hidden from view, but what even the individual does not know that they are carrying. For the most part, this as part of the body language is where you have filed those things that you are working on but would not automatically show to another, the little stresses of life, the difficulties, what you would term your failures, that is where you hold your failures. That is why at times you see older individuals hunched over. It is not that they did not accomplish much in their life. It is simply that they did not release from their physical essence what they did not accomplish. Wishes, hopes and dreams that were not realized or projects that did not come about as they had hoped or wished that is where they are still, still located there, becoming a little bit more dense and more dense year by year until the poor shoulders cannot bear the burden any longer. And so if you have any doubt as to invisible energy and whether it is light or dense, perhaps here is a perfect example to demonstrate it to you. Even the most invisible energies, if they are carried long enough, without allowing them to move into their own realm of time and space, if they are held there and held there, after a time, invisible as they are, they are still dense, junk energies, perhaps these could be called. Someone carries them and has not let them go. And so when you pat someone on the back, a part of the energy that you are offering them is the opportunity to let that go 
as a matter of fact, to let almost anything go. Why is it that when you comfort one, a pat on the back is what you offer to a child or even to an adult? It is an invitation to let that go. Let the energy fall away in your back so that it does not need to be transferred to your front field energy that you would then offer to others or carry about you as something that goes before you. And so a pat on the back energetically says to the being, drop it here and now. Let it fall away. Let it roll off your back, as you have heard. With a simple pat, let it go before it becomes more than that. And so when you embrace or hug another, even one that you have just met, and that embrace reaches to the back and the back shoulder, and the hands, sensitive as they are from the handshake, in essence, this energy from a hand that is normally put before you, extended before you, is now wrapped around the back of another and can see everything that is there. Everything that is not revealed or shown, the hands, the body language interprets and receives everything that is there. And so this tells you why there are some individuals that automatically will, yes, embrace or hug another, where others would not necessarily do so. They are not comfortable necessarily having someone else read them to that level. They do not wish to be seen to that degree. The further down on the back one travels, the more the hands can see, the more that they can read about the individual. It is a little bit like your inner environment or your inner sanctuary. The more that you allow one to travel through the spinal column, down the back, the further in to your life they are able to read or see or feel. And so in your cultures, in your societies, it is not always appropriate to touch, to feel, unless one is invited to do so. And it is because the level of invisible sensitivity in these regions, the spinal column contains all of your stories, all of your truths and your untruths, and all that you have lived and not yet lived. It is for some to see and not for others. The back of the neck is another such area. The back of the neck is many times protected by hair. It is protected by a collar or by a certain dress. It is an important part. It is protected by a shawl. Sometimes it is protected even by what you term jewelry. This seemingly beautiful object, this chain, can protect, encircle, enfold, or offer many different kinds of energies depending upon the interaction of the metal, of the element, or the mineral, the bead, or what it will be. All of this affects very much the energy of the neck that also holds a very great truth. After all, the neck is the gateway between the head and the rest of the body, or the higher and the lower self, if you like. And so this particular entryway for the back of the neck is just that. It is called at times an energy induction center. And so it is not all that are welcome there. It is a little bit like welcoming someone to your home, but not allowing them into your inner sanctuary. Greeting someone in a courtyard, but not allowing them into your more private environments. And so even with an intimate hug, the neck is many times avoided. 
and when one is touched in sensitive areas behind the ears, at the nape of the neck, it brings a tingle. At times that tingle feels very stimulating. At times it feels inappropriate, depending upon, again, that invisible field, what is made available there or what needs to be protected there. A brush of the cheek is another very sensitive area energetically. The cheeks speak for you in essence. They are the part of the face that shows to the world your well-being. It is the cheeks then that are raised or lowered with the emotions. What you think of as a smile it is more the energy of the cheek itself to brush against it is to acknowledge a physical connection to the world. The physicalness that you show to the world is there. And so when you brush a tear away from the cheek or brush against it in a soft moment or kiss a cheek instead of a mouth this is a way to bring great honor to the moment. It is a way to say, I acknowledge the face that you show to the world. It is a way to say, I acknowledge your courage, your bravery, your creativity. This one I will ask you to think upon. Perhaps it is a part of the body that you have given less notice to. After all, you look to the mouth to see what words are coming from it. You look to the eyes to see the emotion or the tone or how they are arranged or the clarity of their gaze. But the cheek, that is one that perhaps you have not pondered very often. The knees, we must explore these as well. Perhaps you have not thought of this often as well, but when you greet another, sometimes the knees will lock in place. They make the body very rigid. Now you are standing taller or firmer. Now you are holding your position. Now the knees are speaking for you, even if you did not realize that. What of other emotional moments where you will say, well, your knees had turned to mush, or you must sit down because your knees can no longer hold the weight you feel wobbly. The knees first receive the entire axis of your body. It is the knees then that allow you to transfer weight from one part of your body or being or language to another. Energy that comes, very physical energy that comes from the ground, from the very center of the earth, once it passes through the feet that we will come to next, it is the knees that will decide if that energy can be raised to a higher position in your being or if it will stay there to be locked up. And so the knees speak very loudly for you as well, and they are at times protected as well. Why is it that when you are sitting at the table with one and your knees bump into one another or touch one another, very quickly they are moved away? What would be so important or so sensitive about a knee that you would need to quickly move it away as if it had invaded the space, as if it had too quickly become an intimate moment? It is because the knees are just that. The knees determine how safe you are in your environment. They determine at what level the energy can rise or fall, a higher level of gravity or a lower center of gravity. It is the knees that decide whether you should be standing in the moment, whether you are comfortable enough to sit. And you will notice that you need a certain amount of room around your knees. It is not always even comfortable to have both of your knees touching. It is almost as if they need their very own space in the world because the knees also affect your polarity. Left and right 
polarity, left and right hemispheres, left and right brain, all of these activities at the lower center of gravity are controlled by the knees. So it is almost that these are thinking centers for you as well. They connect very much to your physical environment and how you relate to it, but also how you relate to others in that environment. And of course then the feet, for the feet as well will determine whether they will carry you or not. Many times you believe it is that your shoes are comfortable or uncomfortable. I have been standing upon them too long, I have been wearing them too long, they are not my most comfortable shoes. No, it is rarely that. It is how well you are adjusting to that moment upon the earth, that moment that you are physically connected to the earth, that moment in which it is asking you to stand tall or to stand for yourself or to move forward for yourself or to move in other fields that are invisible that may be very comfortable to you or very uncomfortable to you where you may be asked by your own being to say or do or be in environments and spaces that are not altogether your own. And so your feet speak for you and sometimes very loudly. Get me in here, get me out of here. Stand in the corner, face this way or that way. Shuffling of the feet a movement forward or backward where the feet are concerned, rocking upon the heels or the balls of your feet, even how tightly the toes cling to the shoe or to the field or to the floor that you are upon. Remember as well the reflexology that we spoke of earlier. Every organ of the body is stimulated by the feet and particularly when you are standing upon them as well. When you are standing upon your feet, every organ of the body is engaged, it is at work, it is working differently than when you are seated with your feet resting comfortably or propped at a certain level, not upon the floor or the very ground. When you are on your feet, a part of you that connects to the brain and to the very environment that you are on is working. You are in your working self. You are responding to life. You are responding to others. And all of the fields are switched on. And so there is automatically a relationship between the feet at the standing level and your level of alertness in how you respond to life around you. All of this you present to others. And so imagine now that it is no surprise as you meet others in your day, as you interact with them, that all that we have described upon at the invisible level intersects with others and theirs intersects with you. All of this determines then, as we have said earlier, how much space you need between you and the world, in what moments. If you are standing next to someone and feeling very comfortable with them, at times they are complimenting what you have or do not have. You may feel that it is because you like this individual or what they have to say or do not or you prefer their gentle demeanor, or you do not. But there is much more taking place. Sometimes, even if you are missing a certain ingredient, even a certain vitamin, yes, even a certain mineral vitamin, that can be transferred from one to another by an embrace that says, I care very deeply about you, Anything that I have is yours for the asking or the taking, for I have plenty. Even in a gentle embrace such as that, one field may exchange with the other particles of energy, necessary nutrients 
thoughts that you had not considered, feelings of approval that you had not given to yourself, nurturing well-being. Sometimes even in the scent of another, you may draw to yourself what is missing. And so you are sometimes called upon to be nurtured by another or hugged, embraced by another, a handshake or even forced to stand or sit very close with another individual that you would not normally choose. And yet, they may contain exactly what you need. And all of this at the invisible field where you do not always understand why this or that happened. And yet it was indeed for your well-being. And so what do you see in others? Almost everything at the invisible level. Whether you are clean or messy in your life or in your words or in your integrity is in that invisible field. Past lives, particularly those that are relevant to this life, they are in that invisibility. How much human content is there? Just as you would know someone's blood type by examination, well, you would understand someone's human slash ET type in their field as well. That is also visible in the invisible. Your business practice, how well accommodating you are to others, whether you give someone your word, yes, it will be ready on Thursday. Well, if it will not, that is in your invisible field as well. Sexual orientations are visible to the invisible. And even how you relate to your own fields of understanding. Your life experience is visible. Your ability to be honest with yourself and with your surroundings. Your ability to reconcile relationships, in other words, to understand their value, how they add or subtract to life or to the moment, honoring of those in a certain team or community environment, that is visible. Whether you are one that is easily able to move forward or dwells upon past scenarios or the past, that is also visible in the invisible. So you begin to see, perhaps, that space is very much filled and not empty space at all. Now, what can you do with this information that we have brought forward with you? Yes, it is very informative, very curious, and certainly, as I said earlier, now when you meet others or place yourself in certain environments, surely you will ponder these words and see if you can adjust yourself accordingly, making yourself more comfortable and such. And you see, you can use these somewhat as a tool, but only to a certain degree. Because as you think upon this with your personality, you will only be able to do so much from the personality self. Now, what you can do is establish a relationship or a pathway from the personality that has awareness of just the moment to a deeper awareness. And if you like, you may set up certain corridors or pathways within you that allow quicker access to all that you are and do and know and have seen and have been so that there is less barriers, less boundaries, less protections between one layer, between one dimension and the next. You have another expression in your time that says, well, you cannot change a tiger's stripes. Well, perhaps you cannot, but you may be able to rearrange them so that some of the stripes come before the others, or so that one sees what is behind the stripes, even if they are still there. In essence, that is what you can do with yourself as well, by giving to yourself the simple permission that says that you are safe in your environment. After all, look at all that we have said is already there to protect you, to nourish you, and that knows so much about you. Even your knees 
in some way know more about you than what you know in a particular moment. So why not give that invisible realm that knows so much about you permission to be you, permission to use this invisible field in your favor, permission to speak for you from that level of self, from that level of well-being. How can this benefit you? Well, it will allow you to be more creative almost instantly. It will allow you to see the future more quickly than you do now, to prepare for a future that is beautiful and bountiful more quickly than you do now, to be more in your cause rather than effect sooner than later and to recognize yourself as cause. It will allow you to see your future a little bit more than you do now and it will allow you to become accustomed to not need only your physical eyes or ears or physical sensations to know or to trust the world around you. And it will allow you to develop a greater relationship with the other kingdoms and with the other elements, for they too are a part of that space that is filled within you. All that we have been speaking of also applies to the plants and the animals and the minerals, but none to the extent that it does for human and the humankind and the human kingdom. You can see that it does apply to them if we were to then evaluate a normal environment of yours as well, one that may contain rocks and crystals and minerals, for instance, or one that would contain plants and trees they are there for your enjoyment because they add to the environment, because they bring freshness, color, fragrance, or well-being. All of these fields interact with yours as well. And in your personal environments, the more of these that you add to them, the more that they clear the cluttered, invisible, field space for you. You may wonder, other than the beauty of minerals and crystals, for instance, their field of energy is solid, it is firm, but it is very open. The beauty of the mineral kingdom, it has very little pretense. A rock does not attempt to be more than a rock. You do not see it even moving in the breeze, swaying for attention from you. It is very comfortable anywhere that you put it. And it has a very solid but less than dense field. The field of the mineral kingdom is just the opposite of what you might imagine its physicalness to be. The more solid it appears, the more light its frequency and what it offers and the field. That is why many wish to climb the largest mountains in the world, for instance, because one feels the lightest possible upon accomplishing that. Or any time that you share yourself with a great and powerful aspect or element of nature, it allows your density to merge with that and to experience its opposite, its lightness, its wellness, well-being, and health are all associated with these. The same is true of great fields of energies from the plant kingdom, whether one finds oneself in a grove of trees or simply with one in their own courtyard. It is the same feeling, roots that go deeply into the earth, branches that reach lightly toward the heavens, happy to bask just for a few moments in daylight and sunlight, swaying for the breeze, happy to captivate your attention even if for just a moment and share that environment with you. And so they cleanse your fields, this cluttered energy that we have described. They make space, space for you so that you will feel comfortable in your environment. 
and all of these fields interact with you evenly, openly. I tell you that there is much more to the invisible world than to your visible world. And of course you have heard this and now our little discussion has brought a little bit to the forefront for you. But I tell you to explore this subject more. Interact with one another curiously, courageously, bravely, creatively and see what other energies you will take note of. See what other environments will invite you to explore. You will see that as you come to know more about space and light and time, you will also have a relationship with these that is lighter than the one that you have now. As the smallest of suggestions, I would say to you, take note of the day with methods that are other than those of a watch or a clock that says that you are late or what you must accomplish by a certain time. Take note that it is morning, early morning, afternoon, late afternoon, or an evening. Take note of the time by noticing how much light, sunlight, shade is near you, more than what by the hands of a clock will tell you is left or available to you. You will see that one will give you much more, adds to your day, the other somehow seems to subtract from your day. You will see. Until the next time, sweet ones, as always, I have thoroughly, deeply, and truly enjoyed our time together, looking forward to the next and to the next. I bathe in humanity's oneness and love and compassion, adoring each and every one of you, the thoughts that occupy you, the feelings that you share, and the creativity that you bring forward. Until the next time, I bid you good day.